It's a bit like going to the proctologist for dental work. You have to go <laughs> everything, through, everything through the mm. back. It was, it was a, a different, different time. time. So this has a chance of actually appreciating. I hope so. Even the Maserati logo isn't all that well known. No, no, the Trident. People, people think it's chicken of the sea or something. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to my classic car. Well, this week we're out in sunny California to visit Jay Leno, one of my favorite places. Jay's always got great stuff, and I think we'll do something foreign today. I, I, I'm going to see if I can find Jay. Dennis, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, you always seem so thrilled. I don't know. I'm what always is... thrilled to have you here. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. Well, like I was saying, uh, uh, you know, we do a lot of different stuff, but we haven't done a lot of uh, French cars right. in the past. You have a lot of French cars. Yeah, these are all Bugattis here. That's a Type 38. That's the only American-bodied Bugatti ever made. Bodied by who and where? That was bodied by Murphy in Pasadena. If you saw the movie Sea Biscuit, yeah. a, a man named Charles Howard, he was the guy. And uh, he got pretty wealthy, and he ordered a chassis from Bugatti and had the chassis sent directly to Murphy in uh, Pasadena. And he did this car here. It's called the American Roadster. It's got no, uh, no top, no side curtains, uh, no running boards. It was kind of revolutionary at the time. Well, it's also, whereas most of these others are really boat tails, that's, that's not really a boat no, tail. No, no. This, this was... Move, this was uh, used in a movie called Christopher Strong, starring Katherine Hepburn. She played a young, kind of a hip divorcee, and yeah, she yeah, drove yeah. around, and she met a very conservative guy, and there's all sorts of footage of this car in the movie, which is kind of interesting. But we'll do that one another time. Fine, on, fine. <laughs> this one here is a Type 37 supercharged. That's four-cylinder, 1500 cc. Uh, Bugatti's were sort of the exact opposite of Bentley. Bentley, Bugatti used to sort of, in a left-handed compliment way, say that, uh, Bentley built the best trucks in Europe. <laughs> and they were, yeah, yeah. they were strong, they were massive, big frame, big, powerful big cars. Whereas these were very spindly, very light. I mean, they literally danced down the road. It's just a different way of looking at it. Type, what's that, 37? Type 37. Is this, this also a 37? This is a Type 37 supercharge. This is the car of which the uh, new Bugatti Veyron is named after. Oh, Pierre really? Veyron yeah, was a yeah. Grand Prix racer. Uh, he was a war hero, French resistance. One of those guys escaped from the German prison camp, went back, fought for the French again, was captured again, uh, executed. Uh, but when I bought this car, I got, the man I bought it from bought it in 1950. And he had literally draws of paperwork. I mean, there were file cabinets that came with this car. And being sunny California, you don't really want to sit and go through file cabinets. Right. And one day it rained for like five days. <laughs> I, was I, did I happen to be out? And one of the days, you, whenever you come, it rains. <laughs> and uh, for, for like a whole day, I went through correspondence and I realized, oh, and I found the title and the bill of sale that Pierre really? Veron had owned this car. So that wow. kind of made the value of it go up a bit. And we used it up at Pebble Beach and Bugatti borrowed it to put on display because he's, they had their French, the white and the yeah. blue was the color of their new Veron that they were using at the time. So we had this car to show. So that was something kind of I never understood. And, and so many of the cars have this, but it's the it's this it's the cable that runs on these cowls. Why is that? What is that? Well, this this here, the safety yeah. wire. Yeah. Well, this is what holds the body on. These are those Zeus fasteners. Yeah. Oh, you turn okay. them and they come up. Ah. Okay. So you, you you tighten it. You put the wire on it, you pull it to the next one, so now it can't loosen. Got it. So it's literally, I mean, if you cut that wire, it's a bit like a sweater where the, you know, like yeah. the old three <laughs> thing thing. Yeah. yeah, and that, that's how the, having your car held together by a piece of wire that's, now really is not the, yes. it instills composite, composite, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? That's bigger than a Type 37. Right, that is a, uh, that, that's, that, that one there is a Type 35 supercharged. That is the uh, Type 44, that one there. Uh, and that one over there, that's the, that's a rebodied car. That's the Bugatti Atlantique. And that one over there, that's the, that's a rebodied car. That's the Bugatti Atlantique. It's all Bugatti, except it wasn't, it leave the factory with that body. That body was put on later. Ralph Lauren owns the actual one of these cars, which is worth like $35 million wow. or some crazy thing. Uh, this isn't worth, of course, anything near that, but it's all Bugatti and it drives and handles like a real Bugatti, so that's so what I care about. So rebodied when? Um, it was rebodied after the war. I think it was probably done originally in the 60s. Uh, this had a, maybe a body similar to something like that. Like okay. that one over so there. So they turned it in, and they, they referred to these as aero cars, didn't they? I mean, the kind of the aerodynamic. Yeah, aerodynamic. Yeah, they didn't. Other people did. Other people did? Yeah, yeah. 
And and, and would it, was it rebodied in France or? No, no, it was by some enthusiasts somewhere along the line. Yeah, beautiful car. Yeah, they're kind of cool. So a lot of French stuff. A lot, a lot of French, French stuff. stuff. Well, everything in here is French and Italian. And and so this this would have, I mean, this started life as something like this car here. The Type Forty Nine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're probably well. This had a, just, a, just a, I don't know what body this chassis had, but it had a, a different body on it. And <clears throat> this out here. That's your generator. Okay, sticking out there like that. Yeah, generator starter. Yeah, yeah. And that's a sweet little Bugatti. That's a Type 40 uh, Grand Sport. That's one of my favorites. It's that, got that, a nice that's rake got, to it. That's kind got of. the boat tail. This would have been, if there was such a thing as a poor man's Bugatti, this would have been <laughs> it. As you can see. Oh, beautiful. It's got twin and that, carburetors. And that's typical of Bugatti, though, isn't it? All this detail work, yes, no? Or? It is and it isn't. Uh, most of it was done afterwards. If you wanted it done that way, it could be done that way. The reason these have a cubist look to it is not particularly because it's uh, anything artful. It's just that Bugatti were built in a very rural area by farm kids, and it was easy to just make everything square oh, off. Oh, really? Yeah. There's no head on these engines. Well, I was trying to figure out where the plugs. I mean, where? Uh, plugs are on the other side. Okay. There's no head on these engines, so you can't blow, a, obviously, a head gasket. But you have to go everything. It's a bit like going to the proctologist for dental work. You have to go <laughs> everything, get, everything through the hmm, back. Yeah, yeah. well, so you really have to come up through the bottom. So to do a valve job in one of these is very complicated. The advantage is you don't blow head gaskets. Right. There's no such thing. But but this is a. I mean, this is a beautiful. This is a very kind of elegant, light. Yeah, this would this car. would have been a CAD's car. So yes. the, you know, a young guy kind of got a few bucks. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. your rich dad would buy you this to pick up girls on the Champs Elysees and that kind of thing. Life and is that, good. that's sort of what it was for. Because now, if you pick up girls in the Champs Elysees, you lose half the car. <laughs> stuff, so. But it was, a, it was a different time. It was. It, it was. was a, it was a, a different, different time. time. It was. Okay, so this is a lot, a lot of very cool French. Yeah. You you have some Italian cars though too. Well, you know what's interesting? I mean, these cars are pretty expensive nowadays, but there's still bargains out there. And like this one over here, this is a 1962 a Maserati, uh, 3,500 uh, fuel injected. You may have seen this car up in the rack when you yeah, were the last yeah. time. You know, it's funny how uh, prices go on these things. This car was put in a storage unit in 1981, and it sat there for 30 years. And for whatever reason, the guy just stopped paying on it, and after 18 months, it was sold. So I bought it for $25,000. It was painted. Yeah. Uh, the engine did not run. Fuel injection was really screwed up. Uh, brakes were seized. I mean, it needed a lot of work. But just the idea, you know, I had originally been looking for a DB5 Aston Martin. Which this looks a little bit like. Well, the interesting thing was, I found a DB5. I took the guys down to look at it. It was so rusted beyond, yeah. I mean, it was beyond repair. Right? And eventually sold for $186,000 <laughs> just because it's an Aston sure. Martin. And it's a, it's a six-cylinder with a ZF box, Salisbury rear end, girling brakes, Lucas Electrics. This car is a 12-plug six-cylinder, more horsepower, fuel-injected, ZF gearbox, Salisbury rear end, girling disc brakes, Lucas Electrics, Lucas fuel injection, and it was $25,000. You know, this car was $13,000 in 1962. Which was a lot of money. That was a lot of money. money. A Rolls-Royce was thirteen. A Ferrari was thirteen. An XKE Jaguar was a little over four thousand. So you almost could have gotten three Jaguars for the price of this. Yet for some reason, this is one of these cars I think that will just go up tremendously in value in the next couple of years. I mean, I've put a lot into it, believe me. But you can get into exotics reasonably if if you get away from the mainstream of the Ferrari and the what Lamborghini. What everybody's going after. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this kind of stuff is out there. I mean, it was painted this color. And so you haven't, you haven't redone the paint? No, we didn't do anything to the paint. We redid the interior. It had white leather, which is a little, hmm, I don't well, like yeah, white no. leather. When you work on steam cars, <laughs> white leather, not a good idea. It's not white for long, But, actually. you know, we did the wheels, the brakes, the tires, we went through it. And we, uh, it was an air-conditioned car, but the, the, the compressor was gone. So we put, we put our uh, vintage air in it. Yeah. You know, those guys are great. They, we, we put their stuff in all our cars. But it works. And it runs. And so it's, it, it's super. What, Super Ligera? Super Ligera, which means lightweight. I mean, so it's some, of it's some of it's aluminum. Yeah. Lift that up there while I hold it. All right. 
Got it. And as you can see, it's a sexy looking motor. Oh man, that is pretty. The real tricky part was doing the fuel injection. Most guys rip the fuel injection out and just put Weber's on. Well, it's, kind of, it's a pretty wild looking setup, is it? I mean. Yeah, it's a mechanical fuel injection setup by Lucas. It, uh, it, it took a lot of work to get it right. <laughs> we had the engine out, we had the engine on the dyno. The engine was pretty good. The engine's got a lot of miles on it, but it's still pretty strong. The porcelain is still on the headers, as you really? can see. Really, yeah. Dual overhead um, cam. Yeah, I think the fuel injection is what saved it because somebody got fed up with it, put it away. Uh, yeah, enough of this, this. Thing, I'm not yeah, gonna, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, we literally had to pull the throttle bodies out, reborn, do it again, make new butterflies. Pierce Manifold did that for us. They did a great job. And we, as I said, we put our vintage air conditioning unit in it that fits and everything. But there's, and, still, there's still parts available to redo that, Lucas, if you? Yeah, I mean, you know, everything's available. Yeah. That's the cool thing. You know, 10 or 15 years ago, no, but nowadays yeah, the price of it. all these things have yeah. gone up, so everything's available. <laughs> Supply and demand. Supply and, and demand. demand. So how many, how big an engine? How many liter? Uh, three and a half. Three and a half. 3,500. And what parts are aluminum? I imagine the, the hood, uh, the, the deck hood, lid maybe? This is all steel. This is a production car. It's not, uh, this was the car that uh, Maserati decided to make, to make money with. And they were pretty successful with it. I mean, it's a real high speed grand touring car. Got all kinds of goofy little features in it, like this back window opens. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. A back wing window. Is a front wing window too? Yeah, front wing too. And it's got electric windows, which doesn't sound like a big deal now, but it was in 1962. And an Italian car with air conditioning, that was almost unheard of. I believe this is the first Italian car to have fuel injection in a production model. Really? And it was a five-speed. Don't forget, 1962, Corvettes were still standard with three-speed. Mustang had a three-speed. The four-speed was optional. This had, oh my gosh, five-speed. Five speeds. speeds. Five speeds. So this was pretty exotic back in the day. Twin cam, 12 plug. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty exotic. And you did, you did redo the interior. But yeah, we did the interior, did the carpets. Yes, yeah, so it's interesting, too, kind of the square tunnel there is... Kind yeah, of that, a different look. That's exactly the way it is. This is the way they came. Um, my main thing is you can get into these cars fairly cheaply. They're not cheap to work on. Yeah. But if you're resourceful, I mean, a Maserati for $25,000. That's, that's a pretty good I deal. know that's still a lot of money, but not for a classic car like this. Because, you know, it costs just as much to restore a worthless car that's as a, that's a valuable <laughs> car. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, when you have some, if you bought this for twenty-five grand. And you put a lot of money into it. You might get this it. This is probably worth two fifty now. You might actually like get that. it back. If you buy a '59 Cadillac, and you put the same amount of hours in it, you might only get sixty for it, or maybe yeah. seventy if it's really good. But then the guy down the street's got one for sale too. That's not to denigrate '59 Cadillacs. I just mean yeah, yeah, any yeah. car. There's a lot of. So to me, when you're redoing an old car, find the most valuable old car, or the rarest old car you can for the cheapest price. Because, you know, how many guys put 50 grand into a Mustang, then they have to sell it for 35, yeah. you know? Yeah. So this has a chance of actually appreciating. I hope so. <laughs> I know <laughs> I appreciate good to, my, <laughs> and I And I do too. Is that, is that the cigarette lighter there on the... the yeah, yeah, that's very, uh, you, know, you know... Right there, because you, you want it handy. You that cigarette right there in the <laughs> ashtray. you got to have that. And kind of a, kind of a back seat, you know, kind of... Uh, this is a 2 plus 2, but it does have a back seat. But let's take this thing for a Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do This is 240 horsepower, which was a lot in 62. But it is different. I mean, you, you have to have a 62 mindset. Yeah. I mean, you're old enough, as I am, to use the term foreign car. Nobody oh, says yeah. that anymore. But a Cadillac was $6,000. This was $13,000. You know, back in the 60s, a six-cylinder in Europe was like the V8 was here. Aston Martin was a six-cylinder. Jaguar was a six-cylinder. Is this your only Maserati? Yeah. But you know, you can, you can see the race breathing in the engine. It's all in the high revs. Wow. See, it likes to fall. I mean, 
my Mustang pace car is having a tough time keeping up. <laughs> speed touring car you get it up you know a hundred it settles right in so until our next meeting remember honor the timeless classics on Dennis Gage happy motoring <laughs>